Hello there. Hey guys, DJ Ravine here and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've made a new video. Well, actually it's been like a week. But anyways, I've got a new video for you guys. I went on amazon.co.uk and went to see if I could find the cheapest DJ controller. Click buy and guess what? We've got it here now. No clickbait here today, baby. This is DJ Ravine and welcome to Unbox Therapy. Right, so here we go. We've got the box right here. Let's give it an open. I don't know, is this, is this my first unboxing video? I'm not too sure. Oh, if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Yeah, I know, because most people don't watch the full video. Might as well ask you now. And uh, if you guys like good music, subscribe as well. And if you like bad music, well, there's plenty of that here too. Let's take a look. It is a Newmark DJ2Go 2. All right, so here's what we get out of the box. We get a Newmark DJ to go to, a voucher for Serato DJ Intro, which funnily enough, no longer exists. It is now called Serato DJ Lite. Newmark stickers, which I guarantee I'll never use. We got a 3.5 mil to RCA jack. And then we also get your standard USB to USB mini. It's not actually a micro USB or a USB-B, which you would expect out of a DJ controller. And we get a lovely packet of silica gel. Do not eat this, throw it away. Now this unit cost me 56 pounds. That's equivalent to 72 US dollars and are about 102 Aussie dollars. So the new Mark DJ to go to is a very compact device. Just to give you an idea how small it is, well, here's an XDJ RX2. Now here's a DDJ 400. And finally, the DJ to go to. And finally, I don't have a banana for scale, but here's a tape measure because I'm not an animal. Now, before we go and connect it all up, here are the connections that you'll find on the unit. We have a USB mini and also a 3.5 millimeter jack for your headphones on the right side. And on the other side, we have the main output, which is also a 3.5 millimeter jack. All right, let's get plugged in. So all we need to do to plug in is literally just plug in this single USB mini cable. No, that's a very, very tight USB. But uh, that's good because then it won't come out. And we've got a little light, so oh, how pretty is that? Next up, we're gonna run Serato DJ Lite. Now, Serato DJ Lite is a very straightforward DJ program. You have a couple of effects. You also have a very important air horn. The dj to go comes with this big browser knob to let you load up your songs with the one and the two buttons. And then you've got your all important sync button right here. This is gonna be very important on this unit because these have very, very short pitch sliders and it's gonna be a real pain to actually beat match properly because you don't get that kind of accuracy you do get with a long pitch slider. On the top here, you do have some knobs for your master level, and then you've also got one for your Q level for your headphones, which go in through here. Now the headphones also let you choose which side you want to listen to. So pressing that button will give you the left deck, pressing that will give you the right, you can have both on at the same time. And you've got your individual levels. As you can see, there is no up fader like you'd normally expect. They are knobs, so this is officially the world's cheapest rotary DJ all-in-one mixer. So a little bit about these jog wheels, they are actually surprisingly sturdy. I actually quite like them, I don't mind these things at all. But I found out one big thing, and these things are not touch sensitive at all, but you can't really expect that out of a 56 pound controller. So if you have a song going on, there's not gonna be a vinyl mode. If I went like this, while the song's playing, it will just pitch bend it slowly. Now one glaring issue I did find with the fact that this does not have touch sensitive platters, you can't scratch up this thing in play mode. So if you have it in play mode and you scratch, it's just gonna pitch bend it. So you have to have it not playing in order to scratch, which I'll demonstrate right here. Still pretty cool that you can even scratch up this thing. However, I would have liked that they gave us a better crossfader. As you can see, it is like, got these ridges on it and it does not feel good at all. Uh, you can replace it with your own though. And finally, you can see here we have four pads for each deck and you've got your pad mode selector here. Now the first one gives you hot cues, you've got four hot cues for each deck. And then you've got your auto loop, which will automatically create a loop for you uh, of two beats, four beats, eight beats and 16 beats, I think. And then you got your manual loop, which lets you manually set the in and out positions on your loops. And finally, you have your sampler for the air horn. 
you may have noticed one absolutely glaring issue here, and that's the fact that it does not have an EQ at all. We don't have bass, mid, or low EQs. Now, one thing that really annoys me about this unit though, is the fact that they've given us these hot cues, these four pads for each channel. Why don't you guys just remove those and give me a high and low EQ for each? I think that's a much more important thing for DJing. You could definitely have fit that in here, a high, a mid, and a low. And you could probably have kept two of these guys here and give us two hot cues. Because I think four is definitely excessive for a small unit like this. And EQs, in my opinion, are very, very... Not even my opinion, everyone's opinion. If you don't have EQs on your mixer, you're not going to be able to create a smooth mix. You're just going to have all these elements clashing with each other, like the hi-hats are going to clash. But most importantly, the basses are going to clash when you're mixing in intros and outros. But then again, you do also get rotary controls, which technically should give you the smoothest operation on the uh, volume control. But that gives us another problem, and it's really hard to do cuts. So I'm just going to go and pull off a little mix here, just to show you guys that it's possible on this thing. So wrapping up this unit, I think it is actually really cool that you can pick up something like this for 56 quid. It is amazingly well built for 56 pounds. I mean, these knobs feel smooth. This is a one big knob, but they have made some really interesting design choices. Mainly the fact that there's no EQ, but they have decided that, yeah, you know what? We're gonna chuck four hot cues and four pads on this thing because it makes sense. A beginner DJ is not really gonna utilize that more than they would utilize an EQ. An EQ is much more essential than doing creative stuff than pads. If you can't pull off a solid mix on this thing, what's the point? Now, I do think this would be really cool as a touring DJ and if you wanted to test out really roughly how two songs sounded and, you, and you, you're like in a hotel room, just pull this out of your backpack, that would be really cool. Now, for a beginner DJ though, I do not recommend this at all. Save up the extra money, go and get yourself a Pioneer DDJ 400 or SB3 or like a mix track or something like that. Get something that has free EQs. That's gonna be super, super important and it's gonna teach you how to mix properly. And also something like this with such small pitch sliders, you're not really gonna learn how to beat match properly and you're gonna be relying on this big blue sync button. You know, it's very, very bright and it's glaring me in the eyes because it wants you to press this bad boy. So in conclusion, the dj to go 2 is a fun little unit and especially good for 56 pounds and you can DJ with this thing you're just not gonna have a good time. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. My self-esteem relies on it, and I'll see you guys next time.